polar bears are coming into communities more frequently and um, conflict between people and polar bears is increasing. But in the community of Churchill, Manitoba, um, people live alongside polar bears with a high level of tolerance and a lot of respect. We used a really unique uh, way of doing research in this project, and it's actually called an indigenous methodology. So an indigenous way of doing research. So we worked together with Indigenous knowledge holders in the community of Churchill. And what we did is we mixed Indigenous ways of knowing and social sciences to explore how people have lived alongside polar bears in the community for time immemorial. So knowledge holders got together. We used storytelling instead of interviews, which is a really natural way of sharing knowledge in Indigenous communities. And through those stories, uh, we were able to find, you know, the patterns and the meaning and the why and the how um, for how people live or how people coexist with polar bears. It's incredibly important that we include Indigenous knowledge in research um, for a number of reasons. There is so much specific place-based detailed information that cannot be gathered through shorter visits or through um, data that's collected at larger scales. Additionally, uh, including Indigenous knowledge in research um, builds in and brings in knowledge for the people that are affected by the decisions and the policies that come from this research. So these people are directly impacted um, in their day-to-day -day lives by the outcomes of research and not including those perspectives. Um, we miss things. We miss really important things that help bring all of this together. So part of decolonization and reconciliation is making sure that we have space for these voices at the table, that these knowledge systems are able to be brought together in a variety of ways, and that those then are considered in policy and management actions moving forward. Yeah, they've been, they've been a part of the land. They've been a part of the environment. They've been um, observing uh, the the animals that are in their environment, so they have the knowledge that um, a researcher wouldn't be able to get in a three-month visit. They have the knowledge of 30 years of observing. And one of the beautiful things that we've done or with the research project is included the elders who know the history of living with polar bears, and then we've also included the youth and by doing that, by including elders and youth, it helps to continue the sharing of intergenerational knowledge, which we know is super important in Northern communities. Everyone spoke directly from their heart as if we were dealing with a family member. I think they both agreed that the polar bears were like family and that we have to be respectful when we're dealing with polar bears. Uh, a lot of people said, you know, they were here first. This was their home first. And we kind of came and lived with them. So that respect should be there for um, giving them enough land to uh, do their hunting or their migrating around, you know, um, rearing their babies and that we should be respectful of that.